Welcome back to the coverage of Artemis One launch here at the Launch Control Center at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I am here with Administrator Bill Nelson, who was on hand for the launch today, which had hoped to be uh, a big moment in history for the Space Center, but instead uh, it'll have to wait for another day. The launch attempt was scrubbed. Administrator, thank you for being here. What are, what are your thoughts? How are you feeling after um, all of this anticipation and buildup and then unfortunately couldn't, couldn't go to that? We don't launch until it's right. And in fact, uh, they've got a problem with the uh, gases going on the engine bleed on one engine. Uh, you can't go. You, there are certain guidelines. Uh, and I think uh, it's just illustrative that this is a very complicated machine, a very complicated system, and all those things have to work. And you don't want to light the candle until it's ready to go. Um, I have some personal experience uh, in the crew that I participated in uh, on the 24th flight of the space shuttle. We scrubbed four times mm. on the pad. Okay. Uh, and the fifth try was a flawless mission. Uh, we know had we launched on any one of those scrubs, it wouldn't have been a good day. Mm. And so uh, that was Hoot Gibson and Charlie Bolden's crew. And so, uh, you know, this is just part of the space business. And it's part of particularly a test flight. We are stressing and testing this rocket and the spacecraft uh, in a way that you would never do it with uh, the human crew on board. That's the purpose of a test flight. And you talk about the complexity, and certainly that is the case here. Uh, and learning as we make these attempts. In fact, this engine bleed was something that they wanted to see in wet dress rehearsal number four, didn't get an opportunity for it. So for the hard working team that is still here actually gathering data from this rocket and its current configuration, any message uh, for the launch team? I want them to know that they're do doing the perfect job that they always do. Uh, they're taking an uh, opportunity while that vehicle is still uh, fueled up uh, to work this problem. Uh, and they're going to work it. They'll get to the bottom of it. They'll get it fixed. And then we'll fly. And when we fly, we hope to have all of our guests back. Of course, there were big crowds uh, here for this attempt. A lot of special guests, including Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, was here. Um, did you keep them briefed on what was happening and, and what happens next? Yes. Uh, she and I had a good visit. Uh, I met her at the airplane. Uh, I came straight here to talk to some of the launch control folks, and uh, she is fully briefed on the whole thing. Uh, she's very happy to be here. Uh, she is an enthusiastic space booster, uh, as is President Biden. So uh, this, uh, this whole thing will make our country proud. And Kamala Harris also chairs the National Space Council, so has a big role in our space program here. Senator Nelson, Administrator Nelson, thank you for your time. Appreciate you being here Thanks. and, uh, you know, uh, giving our leadership here to this uh, launch effort. And we'll have to wait for another day. The next availability is September 2nd, though we don't know at this point if the launch team is going to use that. So we'll uh, wait for a press conference roughly four hours from now to find out more about it. That's it for now for NASA TV and the Artemis One launch attempt coverage. I'm Daryl Nail signing off. Have a good day.